Hello friends, welcome to Code Crush Coding. In this video, we are going to learn some of the Java interview questions. So let's start. So first question is, what are the various access specifiers in Java? So why we need access specifiers in Java? So in Java, access specifiers are the keywords which are used to define the access scope of the method class or a variable. In Java, there are four access specifiers given below. The first one is public. So whenever you declare any method class or variable with a specifier public, then that class method or variable can be accessed by any class or method. We will see this in the demo. Let's first understand the theory. After that protected. So protected can be accessed by the class of the same package or by the subclasses of that particular package or within the other package. Another one is default. So default are accessible within the package only. By default, all the classes, methods and variables are of default scope. If you don't provide any access specifier, then by default they are considered as default. And the last specifier is private. So if you declare a class method or variable as private, so that can be accessed within the class only. So let's understand and check the difference between all these four access specifies in our demo. So here I have created two package. Here you can see package one and package two. Inside package one I have two classes test one. So here I have class test one inside that a main method and this is under the package one. Another class that I have created in package one is test three. So in test three we have this class test three and which is also inside the package one. After that, I have created a package 2 and inside that package 2, we have a class test2. Here we have a test2 class and a main method. Now, what we will do in the package 1, we have a test3 class. Inside this test3, we will declare some variables with the access specifiers. Now, let's see first private. So if I declare here private int, let's say roll number, this is private int roll number, and let's have some value also. Let's say one. After that, I will declare one variable of public type. So public, let's say string name, and let's say name is ABC. After that, third variable of type protected, protected. Let's say string email, and here I provide the value as XYZ, XYZ, and the last is the default we have already provided three access specifiers private public and protected now if you don't provide any type then by default it is of default type so let's have that we will say it here float let's say feeds and let's say thousand so these are my four variables declare here as we have declared in it float we don't need to provide it inside the inverted commas thousand zero zero d or F we need to say. Yeah. So these are the four variables we declared inside this test three class. Now these are inside this test three class. And now what we will do, we will try to access these variables inside another class. Let's say in the test one as test three and test one are inside the same package. Now let's create the object of test three class. So test three equal to object new test three. Now we have created the object. Now let's try to print the variables that we have declared inside the test three class with the help of object. So obj dot. So here you can see we are getting three variables name, which is name, feeds, and email. Here you can see name, feeds, and email. We are not getting roll number. If you try to print here object dot roll number, see we are not getting that particular variable. Why we are not getting that variable? because that variable is private and as it is private it can be accessed only in test 3 class it cannot be accessed in other class so that was the theory says private can be accessed within the class only as you can see roll number cannot be accessed in test 1 other variables we can access like name obj dot see we are able to access name here we are not getting any error after that as name is public so public can be accessed in any class or method 
after that we had protected so what was the name of variable email so here you can see we are able to access email as well why because in protected protected can be accessed by the class of same package or by the subclass as they are in the same package so that's why protected can also be accessed and the last one was fees and the, it is of default type and default can be accessed in the same package as two are in the same package we are able to access these three variables now let's try to print them what we will do we will say your feeds let me copy this statement so here we will have your name then email let's save this and run So see we are able to get the values a b c x y z and thousand so these three variables are accessible inside the test one class which is in the same package as test three but we are not able to access the roll number because it is a private field now what we will do in the test two class now test two is inside the different package now let's see which variables we can access here so let's first create the object of test three so test three object is equal to new test three and now we will try to print the variables this is out obj dot so here we are only able to access the name variable why we are able to access the name variable because here you can see name is public and public can be accessed everywhere protected email is not we are not able to access the email if you try to print your email obj dot email you will get your error what the error says it will be not able to recognize this variable as it is not visible because protected can be accessed in the same package as test 3 and test 1 were in the same package we were able to access it but test 2 is in different package so that's why we are not able to access email also now if you try to access the default one which was the fees again it is not accessible because default one are accessible only inside the same package as this is in different field we are not able to access any variable except the public one which was the name if i save this code and run now so we will be able to get the value of name here see other variables we cannot get because we are getting error for those errors so that is the theory of these all access specifiers so remember that public can be accessed anywhere private can be accessed within the class only protected can be accessed in the same package and default can be accessed in the same package but protected can be accessed by the subclass of that particular class also so let's move towards the next question so what is the default access specifiers for variables and methods of a class now we have learned that if you don't provide any access specifier let me show that inside this test 3 class we haven't provided any access specifier so by default it is of default type means default access specifier for variables and method is package protected means that can be accessed inside the package only and that is the property of default access specifier variables and class are available to any other class not outside the package but in the same package now this is a different question here what will be the round 3.7 output and seal 3.7 output so basically these are the built-in functions in java there are two type of functions like user defined functions and built in functions user defined functions are defined by the user built in functions are already provided by java now let's try to see what will be the output of these two functions now let me remove all the content of these classes test two test two Now inside this test two, what I will do, I will make one print statement, this out, and let's call the round function. What was the function name? Round, round three point seven, and this function is provided in the math package. So you need to have the math package imported first. Math, then you need to provide the function name which is round, and you need to provide the value. So it was three point seven. Now let's save this and run now test two. So 
see we are getting here four so what this function is doing it is rounding that particular value to the next integer if it is in decimal point so it will round it to the next integer if you provide here 3.5 then what will happen let's see still we are getting here four let me remove this part in the test two here you can see if you provide 3.5 still it is providing the value 4 means any value to the next of integer like 3.1 if you provide still we will get the 4 value no we are getting a 3 means till 3.1 till 3.4 you should get the value as 3 the nearest integer to that and after 3.5 it will make it to the next integer so basically it is rounding your decimal value and the next value was sale. So what this sale will do? Let's see that. If I provide your sale function, let me remove this. Math dot sale. And if you provide your three point seven, so what it will do? See, we are getting a four point zero. So it's provided decimal value and provided to the the next value like if you provide the sale 3.7 then still we are getting a 4.0 and if you provide a 3.5 then what will happen let's check that see we are still getting 4 and if you make it to 3.1 then still we are getting a 4 so that is the difference between sale and round so inside the round if you provide till 0.1 till 0.4 then it will print the values to the nearest integer means the lowest value and here inside the cell if you provide any value here from 0.1 to 0.9 it will provide to the next integer value so for 3 it was 4 so we are getting here 4 so as you can see round 3.7 return 4 and cell 3.7 also returns 4 but if you change this value to 3.1 then in that case round will return 3 and cell will return 4 now the next question what is the output of following java program now we need to identify what will be the output of this java program let's copy this program what will be the output of this program we have one class test 2 after that a main method and two print statement basically we need to identify what will be the output of these two print statement so first statement we have 10 plus 20 plus this string so these are the numbers 10 then 20 and this is a string java t point and after that another one we have here we have java t point then 10 then 20 now let's run this code and then understand what is happening here so see the first statement is printing 30 java t point why it is printing in this way because first we have these two numbers so first 10 plus 20 will be added so we are getting here 30 after that a string is added so basically it is concatenation means this is added to this 30 value so 30 java t point in the next statement this is a string and this is a number so these two are added so string plus number will be in this format like java t point plus 10 so this entire thing is a string now and after that 20 is added so this particular string is added to 20 so we are getting your output java t point 10 20 if I change this to multiplication, let's say I change this value to multiplication and also here multiplication. Now, what will be the difference here? Let's see that. Run the code. So, see, as it is a multiplication, the multiplication will happen first, then we will get here 200, and then the string will be added to this value. So, 200 Java t point. After that, in the second statement, as we know, if in a particular statement or in equation if multiplication is first then the multiplication will happen first so here we have multiplication so 10 into 20 will executed first which will be 200 and after this this 200 will be added to the string value java t point so we will get here java t point 200 so always remember this these are the some of the popular interview questions to ask what will be the output of this type of statements in this question we have one main method then a for loop is provided and inside this for loop we have one variable int i which is 
having a value zero then provided again a zero then the increment i plus plus and then we have a print statement and what will be the output of this program let's see that let me remove this so here we had four then int i which was zero then again zero then i plus plus and then we have one print statement sys out let's print here hi so here you can see we are getting one error here what does the error says cannot convert from into boolean so if you know the for loop first statement here is the initial value after that we need to provide the condition and then the increment or decrement statement here the java is expecting us to provide a boolean value but we are providing here the integer that's why we are getting this error here so the output of this code will be let's run this to identify the error so see we are getting here error type mismatch cannot convert from into boolean because here we are expecting a boolean value but we have provided here the integer value so these were some of the questions we will cover another questions in the next video thank you for watching